And now back to Paris, who spent the day in Washington Heights on the city's far south side as part of our In Your Neighborhood series. Paris. Yeah, Brandis, and now I'm joined by 21st Ward Alderman Howard Brookins. Alderman Brookins, good to see you. It's good to see you too, Good Paris. to be in your home turf here, Welcome. Washington Heights. You spent most of your life here. You're the alderman here now. How's it uh, coming out of COVID, especially business-wise? You've got the corridor there on 95th Street. So the businesses are starting to do well, and, and everything is really looking good, whether it is the big box retail and the smaller retail stores are really starting to flourish now. We could always use a, a boost, but coming out of COVID, we were hit hard. Uh, the first person to die in the city of Chicago lived here in uh, Washington Heights, and so that really took a uh, hit us hard, and we really galvanized the forces to come together to make sure that people had PPE, got vaccinated, vaccines and, and did everything we could to try and keep people safe. And, and speaking of vaccines, we mentioned earlier that it's still under about 50% for, for a complete vaccination, lower than the rest of the city. Uh, what has to be done to get that number going up? We, we have to continue to get people like Dr. Everett telling people how well the vaccine works. And even if you get uh, COVID, the odds of you dying are, are not there and that this vaccine really helps save lives. And it has to be somebody that they trust, not a politician, but a doctor, a, a, a priest, a, a pastor. And especially someone local. We've heard Absol that everywhere we've gone. And someone, is, is there a skepticism, you think, among some residents? There's always been a little skepticism, especially in the African-American community, and goes back to the Tuskegee experiment. And so we really have to overcome that. People think, and you hear mixed messages on uh, radio and TV about it's not safe, it is safe, et cetera. Let's talk about some um, city uh, business. Uh, the $16.7 billion budget passed. Something There's a in there lot. for everybody. Something it's, in there it's, for it's, everybody. It's, it is Christmas. It, it is, is Christmas. Well, you got all that federal money, but the, can that be sustained in future years when you're not going to get that federal I, money? I don't think that it can be stained ad infinitum, but hopefully we can start uh, growing our city again, getting people to move back, get this crime under control, uh, and then get our revenues up. And so I think it will help stabilize all of the communities, make our neighborhoods better. Uh, and, and again, there's something to fix and help most of the needs that we have here in the city. Speaking of crime, uh, you know, we've seen violent crime go up in parts of the south and west side. How's Washington Heights doing in terms of violent crime? We're, we're kind of holding our own, but we're trying to get everybody to come together. We need block by block, person by person, house and by house. And you have house. lots of block clubs here. We do have lots, but we got to tell people that enough is enough. And it has to be the residents to stand up and say we're not going to take it anymore and come together as a unit to stop this crime. E-scooters has been one of your uh, big pushes here. You love the e-scooters. You're chair of the transportation committee. Are we going to see the e-scooters all over the city? We're going to see e-scooters all over the city. One, it is good for the environment. If we're going to uh, walk the walk, if we're going to talk the talk, we have to walk the walk and particularly do things that make our city greener. And these e-scooters in a short jump from this library to uh, 95th and the Dan Ryan, one mile track, E-scooter is a great place and a great sort of way to get go there. Go from the red line to the library. Absolutely. Uh, the uh, remap, uh, we just talked about that on the show. You know, the Latino caucus wants to add Latino awards, um, but it would be at the expense of African-American awards. How do you think that's going to play out? I don't think that that's going to fly at all. I think that if they want to add awards and they need to figure out how to draw them without uh, uh, pillaging the African-American community in order to make a award whole for them. So if they can do it, then have at it. But the two minority protected classes shouldn't be at each other's throat in order to uh, come up with a map that is fair to all of us. So it seems like bottom line, you want to make sure the same amount of African-American wards uh, stay in the new map as the we current map. We want to make sure that the uh, a, a new ward doesn't come at the expense of the African-American ward. Got it. All right, Alderman Howard Brookins, thanks so much for coming out here thanks with us. Thanks for having me. All right. And Brandis will be back with a lot more in just a bit, but now we toss it back to you. Yeah, the ward remapping, it's a complex uh, situation in Paris for all of them. Thank you. We'll see you in a bit. Mm.